So as a designer turned developer, I've had to take in the approach to, you know, kind of take an actual static piece of content or design and turn it into code. And to do that, I had to kind of go through this weird learning stage where I needed to submerge myself in whatever tech I'm trying to learn. And as kind of a novice in that field at the time, like HTML and CSS, I could kind of work with, but getting into more of dynamic scripting and stuff behind the scenes, initially for me, it was WordPress. So PHP and, and whatnot were my, kind of my entry points to web development. And then of course, later rails, which was full stack and more JavaScript, of course, too. So I guess this video is my approach to saying, um, how I learn new things when it comes to learning new tech. So I think if you're new to tech or new to some language or some framework you want to learn, even if it's very um, premature or, or scary to kind of dive in, I recommend just diving in. Um, so submerge yourself in either the communities behind it, the literature that's out there for it, like books or tutorials or courses, whatever it is, try to just get into it. I wouldn't recommend just like doing crazy boot camps where you spend tons of money, learn something really fast and probably forget it in two weeks. Um, but more so of just repetition, practice, doing things over and over, um, making sure you actually hit errors and stuff along the way, I think is going to really make itself um, ingrained in your brain as you're trying to learn. So for me with Rails, when I was first learning it, I hit every error. I didn't know what I was doing. There wasn't anywhere on the web I felt like I could find that had the answers. So you just kind of had to like slowly pick apart pieces of other problems people had and use them to your benefit. And in that way, you write pretty crappy code, but you might fix the issue. So, and with Rails being Rails and Ruby and being Ruby, they're pretty forgiving frameworks and languages. So they kind of point you in the right direction, even if you can't figure it out initially. But stuff with like JavaScript doesn't do that. So you always are either Googling the error or trying to find something that's just kind of representative of what you're trying to solve. And then it's either beating your head around that or just, you know, eventually figuring it out. So after a very long time, like almost years for many, you, you kind of start to feel at least more familiar with the language or errors you're receiving and then just find that as you progress, as you build things, as you practice, you'll start to kind of grasp things. So the biggest hurdle in my career so far has always been JavaScript. Um, someone, I'm someone who comes, like I said, from design backgrounds. So getting to JavaScript and understanding the real finite pieces of detail around the, the language and how it's utilized have never been truly clear for me. Um, working in Ruby, for instance, it's like completely opposite. Things are just taken care of when it comes to like uh, manipulating strings or something like there with JavaScript, it seems so hacky. And I've been using that lately with um, Vue.js while it's a very approachable little framework, it does a lot for you. It doesn't do everything. So you have to find yourself either reinventing the wheel in some cases when you need to like truncate a string or just change something about a string or just, it's just like reaching for a library, which is I think everyone's approach. So you, and you end up with like gargantuan amount of node modules and then your project just starts to, you know, become a Frankenstein. So, all this to say, if you're learning and you're new to it, just hang in there. Uh, practice makes perfect. And honestly, don't strive for perfection because you're not going to be. I'm, I'm what, three or four, maybe three years into Rails and stuff now. And I still don't know a lot that some of these programmers are 10 year plus uh, experience with it. So it amazes me to see new solutions to problems every day, even if, even if it's just like little bits of how you would write uh, a basic method and what you could do to reduce, reduce complexity and stuff like that. So my advice is submerge yourself. Number one, like accept that you're going to fail and just kind of own that and then do your best to just kind of work your way out of that little pit of failure. It's, it's just part of the process to fail. I think failure is part of learning. So, and if, unless you cannot accept that you're never going to learn. And then finally, as you progress, um, you will practice more and more and things will start to be more clear and they'll make sense to you. 
And as time goes on, that that's how you become more of a professional or someone who's um, seen from someone else as someone who knows what they're talking about. So I'm still one of those people who's learning every day. Um, there's so many technologies I want to learn, but I think the ones that enable me the most are the ones I picked and that's why. So the quickest path forward for me was Ruby on Rails and JavaScript and then HTML and CSS. At one time it was WordPress to do, you know, basic marketing sites and blogs and stuff. And now it's more of application level stuff. So I think it all depends on your own context, what you want to build and why. So you don't have to reach for the latest buzzworthy thing. Chances are that thing hasn't been really polished. So you'll run into bugs no one's ever seen before. So um, I guess that's more my opinion, but take it with a grain of salt. So hopefully this is helpful. If it, if it resonates with you, I'd love to hear your feedback in the, the comments below. I figured I'd do a vlog. It hasn't been, a, it's been a minute actually not, hasn't been. So I'll do these every so often. If you enjoy them, let me know. And for that, I'll say so long. All right.